Howdy everyone! Chinese manual focus lenses have been getting cheaper and cheaper these days, which leads us onto the optic you see before you right now, the TT Artisan 50mm f1.2. It's designed for mirrorless cameras with APS-C sensors only, so it's available on Canon EFM, Fuji X, Leica L, Micro Four Thirds, Nikon Z, and Sony E-mount cameras, but it only offers cropped APS-C image circle. And the key selling point of this lens is clearly its very low price of about $100 new. It's impressive that an f1.2 lens can be manufactured so cheaply nowadays, and considering the lens's useful focal length on an APS-C camera, giving you a nice short telephoto view, excellent for subject photography, and that maximum aperture of f1.2, which can get you some very deeply out of focus backgrounds and help you shoot in darker situations, well, this lens might have value to quite a number of people. Let's take a look at whatever compromises must have been made to get it onto market for such a very low price. I'd like to thank TT Artan for sending me a copy of this lens for evaluation, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. The lens's metallic build quality feels nice and tough. It's small, but it has a bit of weight to it. The first obvious compromise is that this is, of course, a fully manual lens. The manual focus ring turns nice and smoothly, but its size does mean that it can be easy to unintentionally touch it and change focus. Here you can see the lens clearly exhibiting some focus breathing, zooming in and out as you change focus. Then on the top you get an aperture control ring. It has nice little clicks to it at every half f-stop, and the stops are evenly spaced here, so that's a nice little improvement over other bargain basement lenses you often see. My copy of the lens came with a screw-on cap, but you can also get this little hood and plastic lens cap combination separately, which is a bit more useful. There's also no weather sealing to be spoken of here. Its front filter size is a small 52mm wide. Overall, this is a dead simple little lens, simple as they come, but still pretty tough and perfectly usable. Alright, let's take a look at image quality. I'm testing it here on a Fuji X-T3 camera with its somewhat demanding 26 megapixel APS-C sized sensor. No in-camera corrections are available with this lens. At f1.2, in the middle of the image, contrast is okay, but we're seeing a somewhat soft image here with a little purple fringing. The corner image quality is much softer. Stop down just a little to f1.4, and the corners are a bit brighter, and the middle of the image already looks noticeably sharper. At f2, picture quality in the middle is very sharp. The corners have brightened up really well here, but they do remain quite soft. Stop down to f2.8, f4, f5.6, and f8 for gradual improvements, which eventually lead to very sharp image quality from corner to corner. Stop down as far as f11 or f16 for softness to emerge due to the effect of diffraction. Overall, well, as you can see, the lens's performance is just about acceptable, if you take into consideration its very, very low price. I do wish there was at least a little more sharpness in the middle though, at the very brightest apertures. Anyway, let's take a look at distortion and vignetting now. The lens projects some barrel distortion which can be noticeable in everyday photos for really discerning photographers. At f1.2, the image corners are a little dark, stop down to f2 to see them quickly brighten up, so it's an average performance there. The lens's minimum focus distance of 50cm is slightly further than average for a 50mm lens, close-up image quality is dreadfully ghostly at f1.2, stop down to f2 for a lot more contrast there, although the image is still pretty soft. However, at f2.8, that sharpness reappears quite well, so if you're shooting close up, stop down. Let's see how the lens works against bright lights now. The lens displays more flaring than average, although I was expecting things to be a little worse here. The problem seems to be mostly when the bright light in question is on the edge of the image frame. And while we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. Whoa, that coma smearing is wilder than anything you'll ever see. It's a bit like dropping acid while watching 2001 A Space Odyssey. Stop down to f2 though, and it's mostly gone, and at f2.8 we get very good clarity here. Let's zoom out now and look for sun stars. Stop down to f8, and they emerge quite strongly here. Now let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. At f1.2, the lens can get you some very out of focus backgrounds, and the further good news is that they look lovely and soft in nearly all situations. 
And finally, related to Bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f1.2, the close-up softness is almost overwhelming. You can't see much of anything here. Stop down to f2 for some light colour fringing on Bokeh highlights, but at f2.8, it's gone. So this isn't really a serious issue for the lens. Overall, well, this is a fairly soft camera lens when shooting at bright apertures, which is in line with expectations considering its price point. It also has other problems when working in a dark and with close-up image quality especially, but hey, at normal distances, I have to admit, it does take some really striking pictures with very soft out-of-focus backgrounds, so I can imagine this lens having a few fans among photographers on a budget. Oh hey, you're still here! Well, let me take a moment to say thank you to all my Patreon supporters who make these videos possible. I love putting them together for you all, but they certainly do take a lot of time and some expense too. If you haven't already, check out my Patreon page down in the description below, where supporters get all kinds of exclusive bonus content just for them. Ciao for now.